Hello all, welcome back to another Covenant C2 video. For this video, we will be showing how you can modify the Covenant implant network layer behavior. If you haven't watched the previous two videos on Covenant, it is highly recommended, one of which demonstrates how you can bypass Windows Defender and obtain a reverse shell with Covenant. And the other video is on the setup, installation and basic usage of Covenant. The link to the previous videos will be provided in the video's description. What we will be doing in this video is to look at how the HTTP implant works and what we can do to modify the behavior, such as changing the callback URL, modifying the HTTP headers and the default HTTP server responses. We will also be showing how to implement HTTPS instead of relying on the default HTTP protocol. If we look at the default HTTP listener profile, we can see that there are many fields which we can customize. It is possible to modify the values so that your Covenant HTTP implant will be able to blend in more with your target environment. If you need some ideas on what values to use, you can check out the Cobalt Strike Mullable C2 Profile GitHub pages. You can look at the callback URI defined and what are the HTTP headers to configure on both the implant and the server side to mimic a legitimate service. Let's first analyze what does the default HTTP profile looks like with Wireshark. First, we will need to configure a listener with the default HTTP profile. We will be showing how to implement HTTPS with a self-generated certificate later on. So let's leave that out for now. Once the listener is configured and started, let's go to the launchers and use the PowerShell launcher. Copy the generated PowerShell launcher code. For this demonstration, we will have Windows Defender turned off. This will help speed things up a little. If you are interested in Windows Defender bypass with Covenant, check out the previous video in my channel. The link is again provided in the video's description. As expected, we now have a Covenant grant callback on our C2. Awesome! Now let's check out the network layer with Wireshark on our Kali. As shown in the Wireshark console, we can see the implant calling back to our C2 server. The callback URI is test.html as defined in the default HTTP profile. We can right click on the packet and follow the TCP stream to analyze the connection. Since this is the HTTP protocol, the request and response are not encrypted. We can see all the values in the default HTTP profile over here, the headers and the response from the server as well. If we search for POST, we can see that whenever we execute a command, the command is sent via a HTTP POST request in the data parameter. This is totally expected as it is clearly defined in the default HTTP profile. If we were to copy the base64 encoded data and try to decode it, we can see the message within the HTTP protocol is actually encrypted. This means that despite using a clear text protocol such as HTTP, the command and output exchange between the Covenant implant and our C2 channel is still encrypted within the unencrypted HTTP packets. Now that we have a much better understanding on the network layer of how the Covenant HTTP implant works, let's move on to customize it before showing the HTTPS implementation. Let's go to the listener's profile again and select the custom HTTP profile. It is important to note that the GUID value is a compulsory value that has to be defined in either the callback URL parameter or in a HTTP header value. Let's change the callback URL to something like slash demo slash jQuery instead. In reality, you will need to know your target environment and enter a value that is more appropriate to blend in the environment. We can also change the user agent to something else like iPhone for example. We can also add a custom HTTP header and name it whatever. Let's create a custom HTTP header and define the required GUID field here. Let's change the server response as well, Microsoft 10.0 instead. We can also remove unnecessary parameters away. Let's add in a custom ping equals to pong field. 
Let's modify the server response from the default hello world to something else as well. Alright, now let's save the profile and give it a go. Let's restart the listener and select the custom HTTP profile which we have just customized. Let's execute the PowerShell code again. Okay, that's weird. It seems that it didn't work. Oh damn, there is an error over here. Invalid HTTP header characters. Oh, I think I know what is the issue. The HTTP header shouldn't contain empty spaces. Let's change the custom HTTP header demo to add in dashes instead of empty spaces. Alright, this should now work. Let's execute the PowerShell command again. Awesome, we can see that the traffic is now coming in. If we were to look at Wireshark again, we can see that the changes we have made are now successfully applied. The Covenant implant is now using the jQuery callback URI as defined. The server response is showing nothing to see here instead as well. In our HTTP POST request, we can see the added ping equals to pong parameter also. This is how you can modify your Covenant implant network behaviors. It is pretty straightforward I guess. Now, let's move on to the next one. How we can implement HTTPS with a self-signed certificate. Let's remove everything first and start afresh. Let's use OpenSSL to generate a RSA key. Next, we will use the key to generate a public certificate. We will then generate the SSL certificate in PFX format. Let's name it demo-private.pfx. Once that is done, we can use the PFX file to implement HTTPS for our Covenant grant implant. Let's create a new listener now on our Covenant C2 server. We can set the use SSL to true now. We will need to upload and select the PFX file. Let's also change the port number from 80 to 443 instead. Now that the listener has started, let's proceed to use the PowerShell launcher code to demo the HTTPS implemented. Let's refresh our Wireshark capture. As shown in the Wireshark console, our Covenant implant is now communicating in HTTPS to our Covenant C2. The HTTPS protocol worked and all of our packets are now encrypted. Alright all, that is it to this video. I hope you all have enjoyed the content and found it to be useful. Don't forget to check out the previous Covenant videos if you haven't. The links to the previous Covenant videos will be in the video's description. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye.